Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkowiak. Today we're going to be talking about EDC knives, everyday knives, knives that you would carry with you, um, everyday purposes, that kind of stuff, whether it's in urban environments, going back and forth to work, everyday stuff on the weekends, in the woods. We're going to break it all down for you, show you some fixed blades, some folders, some alternative options, and cover all that stuff. I'm going to reframe the camera, bring it in closer into here so that you can see each of these and try and do kind of a tabletop review. So you can see these as we break them down, but there's a lot of fantastic options on here uh, by a lot of different companies and a couple custom ones on here. So, um, and they're all very affordable. Okay, we don't have anything on here that's a, a $300 knife or a $200 knife or anything like that. We're, we're talking workhorse knives and I got them all right here. I'm going to reframe this, bring you in and show you what we're talking about. Okay, I have the camera reframed here. You can see we got quite a collection here. A lot of them are fixed blades, and as, uh, as, as you know, I like fixed blades. I'm not a huge fan of folders. There are some options here uh, that are some good ones, but like I said, I, I'm a big fan of fixed blades. But let's first talk about something like this. You go back to when I was a kid, and this was what your basically EDC knife was. Okay, when I was a kid and then a teenager, this is what it was. I mean, whether it was a shred like this or a buck 110, um, you know, this was what everybody carried. This was the knife that everybody had. This is still my first ever knife that I ever carried. Um, and I, I, car I bought it because I was working a construction job and needed something on there to be able to cut rope and zip ties and things like that way back in the day. Um, but this is your classic carry knife from the old days here. And uh, you can see technology has changed, knife quality has changed, a lot of things has changed, but this used to be on everybody's pocket. So I thought I'd show it because you can still get these today in a buck 110, but you're talking a lot of weight and a lot of bulk, but this is what, you know, it was pretty common to have people that were carrying this knife, you know, to see this on the belt of pretty much everybody, every guy that you ran across had one of these on them. So very common, traditional, it's come a long way though, um, as has the way we carry them now too. Now, if you're not looking for something to you want, you don't want to carry a full size knife or a big knife or anything like that. I don't. They're not. They're not even that big. But you don't want to carry an actual knife. There are some other options here. This little dude right here. This is called a screw pop. Okay, this thing is magnetic. Has a magnet right there on that side, uh, so you can stick it on anything metal, like on a on a. Um, you know, I stick one. I have them on my metal rack by my in my office right there for opening letters, things like that. We got them on the fridge, but basically, it's a replaceable razor blade, so you don't have to sharpen it. Okay, it's a very nice option. Pull the lever up, slide the blade to wherever you want it to be, and you then close the lever over, and then you have a functioning small little EDC knife that has a blade that's replaceable so you don't have to sharpen it. You can take that blade right out, turn it right around, put it back in, and then have that side be razor sharp as well too when you wear it out. So very functional, very lightweight, goes right on your key ring, um, very simple and easy to use. And you can have an extra blade in there. As you see, I have one more blade right back here that stays in there as an extra. So it does give you a nice option here as a functional little um, EDC knife. And I'll have a link down below for these, but uh, it does make for a great little, like I said, something to have in your pocket, something that's on your key ring. It's very small, very compact, very lightweight, very easy to work with, simple little knife here. That's that screw pop. Now along those same lines, you have the uh, Work Pro, which is this one here too. It's another one of these utility blade knives, so if you don't want to sharpen one, you can. This one does have the nice option of a pocket clip, and it does it pulls out. As you can see, it locks with a standard liner lock design in there, so you push that out of the way to close it. Um, but it is a very simple to replace um, utility blade style and uh, it's not hard you know you basically push this down pop the blade out you can spin it around really easy very simple design to it very lightweight very strong super super strong I mean this thing is rock solid uh, and like I said very lightweight very simple and very very cheap and affordable actually I think you get these as a three pack for like 10 bucks or something again I'll have a link down below for you but they are a great little option if you want to carry a utility blade as is this Gerber. This Gerber is another one of those. Utility blade style. Pocket clip on it. Very low key. Very lightweight. Uh, this one looks a little more menacing. Um, but that is a finger guard right there. So you can get right up on that knife and you can use that. Now the downside to this one is you need a coin or a screwdriver to actually undo that screw to replace the blade. Unlike the other two where they're really simple. But this is still very solid lockup. Very good design, very functional, and it does its job very well. It's a fantastic little liner lock style utility blade replaceable version 
of a utility blade knife um, that again is very very inexpensive and very affordable um, so if you don't want wanting to sharpen knives those are great fantastic options for you now as far as folders go there are a couple great ones out there I've always been a fan of the mini griptilian series from Benchmade okay this is so old this one's so old that it actually was when they were using 440 C I don't know if you can see that on there but it says 440 C okay this is old steel I mean this is this knife's quite old as you can tell um, but like I said fantastic design that axis lock is a fantastic lock system on there thumb stud on there for swing out makes it a great great knife design without fail I mean this is this Benchmade mini grip has been around with a fantastic blade design and I have about eight of these um, and they're, they're now with the better steels that are coming out on them like I used to be able to buy these for 40 50 bucks now I think they're over a hundred dollars um, but they are a great design knife shows so like the Benchmade bug out any bench made knife is a pretty good knife can't go wrong with them and then you have the full size this one here full size griptilian a little bigger now this one happens to be a special edition that they don't make anymore um, this is a Doug Ritter M MK1 or whatever it is but this is a actually S30 V steel and it's got a little different blade design to it um, but this is what you can see a little you got the raised bump right here with the uh, chimping on the back little different design but it is based on the griptilian and you can see the size difference between a mini and a full size here uh, pretty significant size difference on them both are fantastic they are great um, you know very very good very high quality fantastic knives so those are always a really good option Benchmade makes some solid knives for sure um, this one here happens to be one of my favorite folders period um, I love this design this is actually a Civivi okay you can see the logo on there but this is Civivi Elementum and this knife only comes in at like 50 bucks it's not very expensive um, and it's got a great clip fantastic design to it this thing is centered perfect the blade is D2 steel um, and it's an absolutely incredible knife now it's a flipper design so you have this tab right here on the back and what you're going to do with that is you basically just push that and it flings that knife out it is not assisted there's no mechanical option to this knife okay it's, it is not a see as you push that in okay it's just popping it out it is not there is no aid in this okay it's just a flipper design push that in swings the blade out close it push the liner over close it and that's left-handed it is right-handed same thing it's like I said very ambidextrous very simple very easy design and it's got a I love this guard right here on the inside so it gives you good guard up front to, to keep you from hitting that blade but that also that guard as you close it protects that blade from hitting you once you start to close it you feel that hit you you get your hand out of the way and you can close it all all up so I love that Civivi um, and like I said the quality of this knife is incredible especially for 50 bucks when you're going to spend probably a hundred bucks or something on a uh, Benchmade mini griptilian uh, today and you can see size difference wise on these um, you know they're they're pretty similar in size not a not a huge difference between these two knives so they're very similar in size axis lock great lock liner lock fantastic lock um, but that's the Civivi and what's nice about the uh, um, you know with running a uh, a folder is that people are comfortable with them and you can put them right in your pocket pocket clip keeps the weight out of your pocket and keeps it on your actual pants and it makes a, a fantastic carry knife and as you can see this is a very classy elegant style knife to it it is not a uh, um, it's not a uh, scary it's not a, a obtruse knife it's not a uh, doesn't scream tactical or I'm gonna kill somebody or anything like that like a lot of knives do today it's just a very simple gentleman's knife that's built really well will handle whatever you need to do with it from your day-to-day -day tasks and it makes for a fantastic little knife now and those are great for for uh, you know as far as your your folders now me personally I don't this one here I do carry the rest of these I don't carry folders very much I prefer a fixed blade knife reason for that is twofold one is I'm in the woods a lot more than most people ever are I spend about 150 days a year in the woods and then on top of that even when I'm in urban environments and working and stuff I still want a knife that's going to hold up more than what a uh, than what a folder is capable of see this folder on this knife the blade stops right there 
Okay, there is no tang in this blade. It's held together right here by that bolt that goes right through there. And if I were to start using this hard or beating on this or doing things that I need, I may someday want to do with it, there's a good chance that I could break this mechanism in here and not have it work for me. So yes, folders are fantastic for EDC stuff. I personally like something that's a little bit stronger and that leads me to a fixed blade. Now when it comes to fixed blade, all of these are very easy to carry and you'll see some different designs here and I'll show you some, but um, I prefer a dangler carry, which is like you're seeing right here. Okay, this has got this string on here. I can put this under my belt loop, run the knife through it, and have this where it hangs like this right on my actual belt loop and then this hangs in my pocket. When I want it, I just take my thumb and I, I, I hook this string out of my pocket right there, reach down until I get the handle and I pull and the knife comes right out. And then the, the sheath is hanging right there like that. It's pretty easy for me to actually put it back in with that against my body. So it's a very simple design to run a, uh, to run a dangler like that on there and it, I'll never lose this knife. That's the beauty of it. Now I had a Benchmade mini griptilian like this that had aluminum, custom made aluminum scales on it. It was one of the Doug Ritter versions of it. It was a beautiful knife. This pocket clip was in my pocket and I was walking through the woods and a stick or something caught that and pulled this knife out of my pocket in the swamp and I lost it. And that was a very expensive knife being the uh, Doug Ritter with M390 steel and it uh, had the custom aluminum scales and a deep pocket clip. I mean, I, bet I, I had a few hundred dollars in that knife and it's gone uh, because of that pocket clip. So for me, what's nice about something like this is you're never going to lose it with that dangler on there and it just hides well in your pocket and it's right there whenever you need it. So very fast deployment on a fixed blade. I like the fixed blades. Now this here is a Topps um, MSK 2.5. Great little knife. Fantastic little EDC knife, very compact in size, as you can see. I mean, it lays almost, I mean, it fits right in your hand. Very functional, but be, by being a fixed blade with that tang, that piece of steel goes all the way down, which makes it a very robust design and strong enough design to do uh, more things that you need to do than you can do with, with something like a, um, which you can see, it's even smaller than a Benchmade Mini Griptilian, but this is going to be way stronger than anything this could ever think about doing. If you were to use this even half as much as you could use this, you will break that lock mechanism or bust something in there and it's not going to hold up. So that's why I prefer that fixed blade design uh, to the knives. But this Topps Mini, S, um, Mini uh, MSK 2.5 fantastic little everyday EDC blade. This thing is absolutely awesome. Um, as you can see, my knives get used. I don't own a safe queen. I, I, I don't own a safe knife, a knife that I would put into a safe. I don't, I don't have one. Every knife I have, it gets used, like used and abused, as you'll see with these. So for me, like I said, it's not one of those uh, play with it for, you know, a little bit and then put it in my pocket and just cut boxes with it. I need a knife that works. I live in the woods and I'm in the woods. Um, you know, I, I live actually in the woods and then I'm spending a lot of time there. So I need quality and I need strength and durability. Um, next up we have an Azula, SE Azula. Now this one here is one that I just recently put together and made and you can see I've made my own sheets by modifying this by taking that off. Here is what one looks like normally. So you can see the design. You can see that I ground that off on my grinder to make it smaller. And yes, it has a dangler on it, just like I was showing you. Um, this one here, actually, let's look at this one because I have another one right here. This is one, this is knife is almost 11 years old, 11 or 12 years old, that is Zula. Fantastic blade design, awesome carry knife, very simple, again, on a dangler, um, very easy, very lightweight, and a very functional 1095 steel blade. Um, and I like 1095. 1095, I trust it, okay? I, it's proven itself to me, and, I, and it's very trustworthy and predictable, and um, there's no surprises with it. It's not accidentally gonna snap on you. The tip's not gonna break off very easily. 1095 is, is my favorite kind of a steel for a lot of, for especially when you get into bigger knives. Now, a regular Azula will look like this when you get it. Right there, here's a brand new one that I took out of the package just to show you. Um, but th this is what the sheath will look like. And then the knife is powder coated, just like that. And that's what one will look like. I've actually stripped the coating off of mine. I do it on every one of them I have. Here's the one I recently made. Um, you can see I stripped the coating off and I put a actual patina on them, as you can see. This is the 12 year old version. You can actually see the difference in the blade 
thick in, in a blade shape and thickness for me sharpening this one for 11 straight years. Um, you can see the size difference, how this is worn down. But that is at Azula, but mine I put a patina on them is what I do with them. And uh, so I take, I strip that coating off of there. But like I said, SE Azula, fantastic knife. Probably my all time favorite. This is probably my absolute all time favorite. Lightweight design, very simple, fits anywhere. You can carry it on a dangler and carry it as a simple neck knife. You can put it in a pocket. You can do whatever you want to with this knife and it's a perfect size to pretty much do everything you need to do EDC wise and in the field. 1095 steel, very rugged and durable. This is an ultimate, in my opinion, fantastic knife. And the sheath gives you a lot of different mounting options on it as well too for whatever you want to do. So an SE Azula is an excellent one. Now, Becker and Essie came together and they made this one called the BK-14. And uh, this is not a bad knife either here. I like the, I, I like the steel better and a, and a heat treat better on an SE Azula than I do that one. This one holds an edge very well. That one not quite so much. It's not bad, but showing you the difference between an Azula and that Becker BK-14. They have a very similar handle design to them, as you can see right there. The Becker being a little bit bigger. Um, still 1095 steel, but like I said, not quite. It's a little softer, not quite as well heat treated as that Azula is. So I actually prefer the Azula over it. But this knife here is a fantastic knife for a dirt cheap price. I think they're like 30 bucks or something. And it is a little bit bigger of a design. Um, there is no jimping on the back like you have on the Azula. Right back here, you have this jimping on there. And uh, but it is a fantastic little knife right here too. Now the sheath for the Becker. I, I'm not a big fan of this sheath. Uh, the problem I have with this sheath is it's it's a little heavier, um, and it's a little. I mean, there's way too much crap going on on this sheath. Why didn't they just cut you know cut this closer, get rid of some of that? They do give you mounting options, but to put this in a pocket, first what you could do with an Azula, look at the size difference. I mean, it's huge in a pocket to carry, but it is doable. You could use this as a neck knife or put it on a dangler, but I think their sheath is a little too big. Um, and I would, me personally, I would modify that if that's what I was actually carrying. Now that Topps MSK 2.5 is also 1095 steel, steel on this too, which again, I love it. Topps and Essie do an incredible job of heat treat under 1095. So those are both fantastic EDC knives. Uh, Everyday carry knives. Now, if you want uh, here, you want to get into some more premium steel, this is a Bradford Guardian 3. Fantastic knife as well, too. This is one I've been carrying the most lately. Um, and actually, you can see that I pinned this Kydex rather than using like a eyelet style in here. I actually pinned this. Look at how nice and tight that profile is for how big that knife is and how tight that profile of that Kydex is on there. That's just fantastic, I love it. And it's held up very well, I'm very impressed with it. But that is a uh, Bradford Guardian 3.0, or Bradford Guardian 3. This is an M390, they also have it in an M690 steel. Uh, and the 690 is a little cheaper, and uh, I don't know if I'd go 390 again. Like I said, that other steel that, um, I, I don't know if you need this, you know, this kind of steel in an EDC knife like this, but, uh, it is a fantastic little knife, and as you can see size-wise to it, uh, if I put it here in comparison-wise, just a smidge bigger than an Azula, and, uh, but it is giving you, uh, you know, very similar thickness and steel, very high quality. You get a little bit more blade to it. If you put them blades here, you line up the blades like that, you can see you got a little more blade to that Bradford and a smidge more handle. So it's a little more functional of a knife. Um, I really do like it a lot. I've been very impressed with this knife and it does very well. And again, size-wise, if you look at like with that Civivi here um, and you were to compare them, they are both very, very similar in size, actually the Bradford being a little bit smaller than that Civivi, uh, in handle size and blade size about almost identical. So both of them fantastic knives here, um, you know, as far as this, but that Bradford, that's a great knife. It fits my hand well, and it works very good, and it's very easy to carry, on, again, on a dangler style sheath. And with this pin Kydex, man, that thing just hides in your pocket very easily and simple. Um, and then another premium steel, if you're looking for now S30V is a little what they I guess by today's standards they outdated because you got S35 you got all these other steels out there but this is still a fantastic one this is a White River Caper 
Um, and it is a great one. They also make the White River Backpacker, which comes with a paracord wrap handle. And uh, it's pretty affordable, and it is a very high quality knife with a very comfortable use. That choil is nice and deep. You got good jimping on the back, and you can really use this blade very, very well, and it fits very comfortable in the hand. Um, mine I have set up as an actual neck knife, which is why you see the longer lanyard on this. I, I use this particular one as a neck knife. Um, but it does, that's another fantastic option. And like I said, that's G10 scales on there. S30V steel holds the edge very well. Um, and just a fantastic little uh, EDC knife and hunting knife and whatever you want. Now, when you get into the custom stuff, these knives here are all custom made by Travis Styles here in Michigan. And he builds incredible knives now if you look at these ones right here now this is a triple set these three together these are all uh they are three equal three basically same knives made for one is for me one's for my daughter one's for my wife but this design here is the excellent is an excellent edc knife as well too look at that look at the detail and craftsmanship on that here this thing is phenomenal let's look at one of the other ones here too to show you um but this thing here um, just amazing, amazing detail. Look at the ridges that he has in that handle as that light catches it on there. Look at it all the way along the spine, great jimping on it. Um, but these ridges that he puts in there, the grip on this knife is phenomenal. In your hand is perfect size blade, great jimping. I mean, this thing just is not slipping or going anywhere. This thing holds just so rock solid in your hand. You can choke right up on it for hunting, things like that. Like I said, 1095 carbon steel in this, great design. And if you were to compare it like to an Azula, you know, it's basically, it's about the size of an Azula. Thickness of steel, very similar to an Azula. And it's also 1095 steel. So these are both very similar knives. And this, uh, these are incredible. And you know what, Travis, he, uh, he builds, a, you know, I have this knife, I have these three knives. Um, he, he makes an incredible knife and the prices are very affordable. I mean, I can't tell you the exact prices um, because he, they vary from knife to knife, but I can tell you for a custom knife, they're very affordable. Um, you know, they're gonna be, most of them are gonna be under a hundred bucks or right around a hundred bucks. And uh, the quality of these things is just absolutely insane. So if you're looking for custom made, and he does the heat treat on these two, phenomenal. These hold an edge very well. Yet he does kind of a uh, differential heat treat and it makes them for, so they're super strong, super durable. You could carry this on a dangler in your pocket. I have all of ours set up as neck knife carry because they are such a thin, small profile of a knife here. You know, so thin and simple that carrying these as a neck knife is just a fantastic option. So that's how I've been running them. And, uh, but they're incredible. And it's neat having a matching triple set for me, my wife, and my daughter. But I mean, look at even the attention to the uh, handles on this, how he's done this, this patterning on here. You got your finger here for your choil, and then look at the steps on this. Your fingers fall into that so perfectly when you're using it. It is by far one of the most comfortable knives I've ever held on to. These things are just insanely incredible. Um, and they're very, very perfect EDC everyday carry size. These are all very light. Every one of these folders or uh, these fixed blades are, are not much heavier than your standard. Uh, folding knife for the most part uh, and you're getting so much more robust knife now again I'm not knocking folders. I know a lot of people like them um, this one here Like I said, I do carry this one a lot here, and uh, I love that Civivi this one here being my favorite folder uh, That I've ever had. I mean, I, I love this little knife uh, But these other ones are like I said fixed blades are incredible now This is another knife by Travis Styles. this one here being a little bigger this one, could it be, this would be about what I would call the extreme biggest size I would want is EDC, but you still could EDC this knife. Um, it's about the size of almost like an SC3. So you can see, comparatively wise, if I were to pop this one and this one, you can see the size difference between these knives. There's quite a bit of difference, but still it is manageable enough that you could EDC this knife. Um, mine's pretty beat up and you can see it's weathered pretty well, but I mean I use these knives. Like I said, they're not, they're, they're not, not used. And, uh, but this one here being a little bigger, if you wanted something bigger, for me personally on an EDC knife, this would win for me all day long. Um, but if you're using it mainly as a hunting knife, you might prefer this, something a little bit bigger. You can still choke up on that knife very well and get the job done uh, for skinning, things like that. But Travis built some incredible knives. There's a lot of great knife makers out there. 
Um, big fan of those uh, and all the knives that he makes. Now, that leads us basically to the, to the extreme end. Now, again, I would say that one, that right there, and then this one here too, which is an SE number three, this is about the max size that I would consider EDC. Now this is probably still legal in a lot of places. I mean, if you look at this, I mean, there's a bunch of people out there carrying a blade that's about the size of this one right here, this Doug Ritter, and you can see blade-wise, you're not much difference in size. You're about the same size blade, about the same size knife. So EDC-wise, uh, depending on laws and stuff, you may be able to get away with edc -ing. Uh, you know something like his SE number three. Is it big? Yes, it's going to be a lot bigger than something like this Azula that you could carry right here. So you're seeing a lot of size difference in there. But again, it's going to give you a lot of a lot of usable knife on there. So in the field, especially, might be a fantastic option. Um, urban, you know, to wear this in a tuxedo or in a suit might be a little tougher. But if you're wearing cargo pants, something like this would probably be manageable. Um, and what's nice about SE is you can take the scales off of it too. So if you wanted to skeletonize an SE3, uh, you could definitely do that. Now an SE4, this is too big. Um, this would be what I would consider too big for an EDC, but I, uh, I definitely like these kind of knives. Now when I'm in the field, this knife goes with me everywhere. So it is technically an EDC knife, but if I'm in the woods, this knife is in my pack with me um, or on me, but usually it's stuffed in my pack and I have either the Azula or one of the knives by Travis Stiles. You know, one of these knives, something like this is going to be in my pocket um, is a pocket carry one of these or any of these and then this one will be in my pack So in my opinion, like I said for me who spends 150 days a year in the woods This is still considered an EDC knife for a lot of what I'm doing um, But something that I want with me in case I have to use a knife pretty heavy and again 1095 steel SE I absolutely love it. I, I have more knives than I know what to do with but these give you some ideas and kind of, that was the main reason I brought this was to show you reference size that even something like that I mean that's where you you can see that you're not talking a tremendous difference in size between something like this but I promise you this that this the strength of this knife this knife could never hold a candle to it because again you don't have a full tang spine and you have all the mechanism and the um, the locking feature in there where this is very hard use and will do anything you want to but even like that little Civivi if you think about it really not that much of a huge difference between that SE4 or even an SE3 when it's there. Um, you know, so these fixed blade knives are not much bigger than a lot of the knives we're everyday carrying. You can see that even this one here is smaller than that Civivi. I love this knife. Like I said, this is an incredible knife. So is this, but again, I like the strength and durability and uh, the reliability and pr predictability that you get out of a um, out of a fixed blade knife more than I do a folder. But this kind of gives you some good ideas. There's a lot of fantastic options out there. There's no reason for you to not have a knife in your pocket ever, period. Um, guy, girl, doesn't matter what you are. You should be carrying a knife with you. And these are some great options. Hopefully uh, you're enjoying it. I'll put uh, links down to these below for you so you know how to find them, including like Travis's information, things like that. But this gives you a good idea of some fixed blades, a um, couple folders. There are tremendous, there's so many knives out there. I mean, there are so many options for knives that is straight up not even funny. There's no possible way I could ever show you all of them out there. And there's a lot of good ones. It's hard to find a bad one today, but I'm at the point now where I am very picky about what knife I buy. You know, there's a lot out there. I've owned a ton of them, um, and I, I'm pretty picky. And as you can tell, the theme running here, I really like the 1095 steels. I really like this size of a knife for EDC. Uh, the folders are there. I haven't carried either one of these in many, many years. Um, this one I do carry quite a bit. This uh, little uh, flipper, like I said, fantastic little Civivi knife. Um, I will put links to all of these down below for you so you can see. But uh, like I said, gives you a couple of options out there and uh, shows you a few different things you can do with an EDC knife. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.